What's up guys, Shane here if you get 3D printing and today we're gonna check out some PLA from filaments.ca. Hey, that rhymed. Welcome back guys. I said this is some PLA from filament.ca and this is solid red. Now I received this in a totally random box from filament.ca. I emailed them almost a year ago now asking if they would send me some filament to review. They said, hey, you know, not yet. I don't know if they've already sent out enough stuff. I was just too small at the time. I had like maybe not even a thousand subscribers back then. Uh, but now I have a few more than that and a box showed up. So I already printed with all the samples that they sent. You can check out that video up here and I'll probably link that at the end as well so you guys can watch that. And this PLA and I figured since they sent me an entire roll, I might as well do an entire video just on this PLA. So let's check it out. Uh, it's a great box. So it's filaments.ca here on the side as well. It uh, tells us it's PLA solid red 1.75. It's QC passed, so that's nice. The nozzle 190 to 230C, base plate 60 to 80C, and there is a probably what 12 digit code here that might be like the run number I'm thinking. And then on the back they have in English and in French, obviously because it's Canada and they speak French up there. Uh, we have on the bottom, uh, share your prints, they have Facebook and Twitter. So I mean it's a very informative box and we've got a QR code, uh, it looks like to be to reorder. If you want to reorder filament, just scan the QR code and you can do that. So it's not a bad box. Inside we have our red PLA and it's the awesome, ooh, this is cool. So I'll zoom in for this. So right here tells you how much is on the spool. At max, there's some odd amount, but when it gets down to one line, you have 228, 146, 55 millimeters. That is awesome because it is so often that you print and you have literally no idea how much filament's on there. This at least gives you a ballpark. So I mean, if you're under, you know, say this, this second line here and you have a 100 meter print that you need to do like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't start it with this filament because I might not have enough. So that's pretty cool. Right, and we have one Descan pack in there. And then the spool, it also has the uh, like saran wrap on it. Cellophane wrap, I think is the proper name for it. Let's get rid of that. There it is, real shiny. No real odor to it. So one side of the spool is solid and it has the exact same sticker here as was on the outside of the box. And then the other side, as you see, has the four cutouts and it has the measuring sticker on there as well to kind of give you a estimate on how much filament is there. And I probably would not hold any weight to how exact this is, but it's probably a doggone good estimate, which is very, very cool of them. It is a uh, single molded spool and the wind is pretty good and it's a nice PLA, really nice red color. So as in all filament reviews that I do, I'll print some big things, some little things on a couple different printers and see how this stuff turns out. All right, so I got a lot of prints done here. Some really technical prints, some not so much, just kind of, actually, I wanted to get a few things printed and figured why not print practically with some filament that I got in. I try to do that as much as I can. So let's take a look at all the different prints and see how they turned out. 
All right, so obviously I printed my coin. Here it is. You can see it is a little bit stringy in there. I probably could have turned my temperature down a bit, but bottom layer on the PEI sheet, just great. Over the supports was okay. I mean, it's kind of like standard PLA. It wasn't really a problem with any of that. Uh, so, I mean, support came off, but again, just stringy. It filled in right. I had, I mean, I used my standard PLA settings. Maybe under extruded a little bit, but I don't think it's pretty good. I mean, so it printed this out really well. Smooth walls, no under extruded parts anywhere. So, so far it's doing good. All right, then I wanted to print something a little practical and something that I figured I could use around the house to have. And it's just this itty bitty little GoPro stand and it just folds up, all the legs fold up like this. Uh, I actually had to redesign the top part because the holes were too big for M3s. And I still really don't like the design. I think it's a little bit too small because unless you have the perfect size M3 bolts, it doesn't really work out. But if we zoom in here to the top, you can definitely see here that there is some under extrusion going on. So for some reason, this was this one was printed on the FT 2020i3. This had a little bit of problem printing this top part. It's still solid, like I can still bend it, but there was some under extrusion in there. But when the legs printed, they printed out just fine without any problems. So uh, like I said, it's just, I had to redesign the head just basically make the hole bigger, not really redesigning, just doing a little bit of work on it. And it sits like that and your GoPro mounts right on there. It's got the capture nut there. So yeah, I mean, it turned out well enough. Little issue with the model, but it's okay. Next I printed these. This came from my Cube 3 files. When I downloaded the Cube 3, I went on the, the Cubify website and they had a bunch of models. And I've printed this before on the Cube for that eventual review, but I wanted to print it again. And it's just a bunch of interlocking cubes. I love the sound of that. That all print with no support just flat like this and they all interlock. And uh, oh, what's his name, Devin over at uh, 3D Print Anything, he did this like a pattern, he made his own pattern, made like fabric, stuff like that. So this is the like genesis of that, I guess, interlocking things that end up making like the prints. So it was a cool print, it printed out without problem. This is on the FT 2020 i3. Uh, or I'm sorry, no, this was on the Forgetech FT5. So yeah, no issues at all on this one. It turned out great. All right, now I want to print something with a little more detail. So this again is from the Cubify website and this is a Notre Dame model. And as you can see, it turned out really well. It, I mean, you can see everything here. It's a little stringy again, again, a little too hot. In here, it had problems with this. This was the printer had problems in here on this part, which it's the Cubify printed it great. This one, not so much. Now these are supposed to be little crosses on here. I know it's hard to see the red on red there. There's supposed to be little crosses across there. And at the very top was supposed to be, uh, this is supposed to be much taller for the tips of these. And those did not print properly either. And I believe there was an, something supposed to be on the tops of these. Those also did not print properly. So, you know, there was that uh, inside here. You can see a little bit of issue with some of these bends here uh, inside. Actually, the air bridging wasn't bad. But, I mean, so it came out as an okay model. It is a little bit complicated. There's a lot of parts to it. Uh, Notre Dame is a very uh, complicated looking building with all the architecture to it. Like I said, the stained glass windows in there. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it did as well as I think it could do. I would have liked to see a little bit better uh, prints off of the FT5, but that's uh, more like a cooling issue with these things. But it still came out okay. No under extrusions anywhere on this, which is the main thing I was looking for. Then I printed one more tower, and I honestly can't remember the name of this one, but everything came out except for the top of the tower right there. Did not fully print properly. Other than that, everything else, I mean, it just printed beautifully. Everything else came out actually right. These little towers in here came out okay, and the turrets here were good. And yeah, I mean, it was just, actually, wait a second, there's support on this. I didn't know I put support on this. I'm a noob. I don't know why there's support on this model. It was supposed to be support. All right, that actually looks much better now. Yeah, now that looks better on those corners. Uh, there was a little bit under extrusion in some of these parts, which this was the first model to show that from the FT5. All the other ones were okay, and they had a little bit of issue here. Again, that was the printer. But the under extrusion, that's not what I was wanting to see. So I did have a little bit of that. And again, on PEI, you've got a nice sheen. So this filament prints really well, but I do have one huge gripe with it, and that is how brittle it becomes just from sitting on the printer. So I literally just pulled this off. The Fortech 2020 i3 is down there and the filament has already snapped. And this has only been sitting on there since yesterday. I mean, there's another piece right there. 
if we go a little bit further, if I bend it a little bit, now it's okay. Like once you get it from in there, but if it's been sitting like this for a little while, like outstretched from the spool, and then you go to bend it in any way, shape or form, it instantly snaps right off. And here you have it. And that I didn't like. I did not have any failed prints while this was printing. There were no failed prints from the filament snapping because as the filament unrolls, it's still okay. But once it sits there for just after the print an hour or two and it's stretched out, it becomes extremely brittle and snaps. I don't know why that is of this filament. I don't know if it's because I've had it out for, I've been printing with this for a week, but I had the first break the very first day that I was using the print, uh, using the filament. Again, I'm unsure if that's just, maybe this roll was kind of screwy, but because I had no fails during printing, I'm not gonna knock it that hard. If I would have had fails during printing, then this would be a total disaster. So I am going to reach out to them or unless they see this video, they wanna reach out to me and find out if they know anything about why this kept snapping on me in a week's use. I'm in a very low humidity country, uh, basically in the desert, so humidity is not an issue here. I have spools hanging above my desk. I have spools sitting on the shelf. None of those have this type of breaking issue. And again, I really don't like that, but it did print well for everything else here. So let that, I'll let you guys make the decision on that. I'm not gonna say yes or no to buy this because I can't say like, yes, it prints, but no, it breaks. It's really hard, you know what I mean? So I'll let you guys decide what you think of this one, but it, you know, it's definitely not getting a full score from me simply because of the breaking filament. It just gets brittle. And they still get extra bonus points for having this gauge on here. I don't know how accurate it is, but as you can see, a full roll, 228 meters, I am down below, just below the 55 meter mark. So I've printed about, what, 180 meters of this filament to print all of this stuff. And I think I have other things around that I'm already using some practical prints that I needed to print out real quick and use. So yeah, I mean, it does work. So you tell me what you guys think. And that is that, guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you decide whether or not you want to pick up some of this filament. Uh, I will put links to all the different filaments on their website. None of it's affiliate links. It's just the info that I found publicly available on their website. And that's what I used for a lot of their other filaments that I tested in the other video. But this one, I'll link it down below so you guys can go check that out and purchase some if you want to. If you guys like this video, give it a big like. If you didn't, dislike. Let me know in the comments down below what I can do better next time. If you want to support me, the best way to do that is subscribe. Thank you to all my subscribers that the fact that you guys come back and keep watching. And if you've made it to the end of this video, you get an extra big thumbs up from me. If you want to support me financially, down below is a Patreon link. Donate me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, thank you. You guys help me buy things for the channel and make it grow. So thank you so much. If it helped me without spending your money, there's a bunch of affiliate links down there. Go ahead and do your daily shopping with those. It's no extra cost to you, but a little slice of what you buy comes my way. And again, helps me build a channel, helps me buy things. I'm recording this on my brand new Canon 50 millimeter lens because my other one broke. So I use the money that I made from you guys through Amazon and Patreon and whatnot in order to buy this lens. So thank you very much for everything you guys do. If it is, just to watch this video to this time right now. So as always guys, happy printing.